Let's do the transition pictures for John Fitzgerald Kennedy, President of the United States from 1961 to 1963 when he was assassinated in November by Lee Harvey Oswald, who was a U.S. Marine and a Marxist, apparently. I didn't know he was a Marxist. But uh, lots of conspiracy theories have gone on about this, about what happened to him, but that doesn't concern me terribly much. He died anyway. What was really interesting to me was what a sick guy this was. Physically ill for a whole bunch of reasons. He had a terrible bad back, a lot of pain with that, and he was given these drugs uh, like amphetamines and hormones and steroids for it. Uh, the side effects of this were terrible, like he had hypertension and mood swings. Also, he had high fevers, stomach and colon and prostate issues, abscesses, high cholesterol, adrenal problems. He was taking a ton of shots and pills and whatever during his tenure in the presidency. And all of that helped me understand the pictures I'd seen for his transition following his assassination. Because when I looked at them, I couldn't quite get why they were as they were. But having read that, I'm getting a better idea. So I went to look for him. There's always a tunnel, remember? There's always this kind of symbolic tunnel I see. When I found him, he was suspended very close to the ceiling, not moving. Petrified, in the true sense of the word, petrified. To the point where, you know, in my head, I go, hello? You all right? I know, sounds stupid, but I was just trying to get some kind of response. As I watched, I saw that his entire body was coated in some solid material, like papier-mâché or something, or plaster of Paris, something like that. And it was beginning to crack. But it took a long time. As it cracked, bits started to fall off it, off his arms, off his legs, off his body, off his face. It was almost like his life force, his natural animating life force, was trying to break free of something very rigid that had held him in place. Now, was that shock at being shot twice in Dallas? Was it that? Or was he trying to break free of rigid bounds of his position? Even his illnesses, his medical treatments, whatever this was, it took effort from the inside. Like a baby bird when it cracks an egg and breaks the shell. A bit like that, kind of, uh, ah, and bits dropped off. Once he was free of this outer casing, he began walking. No floating, no waiting, no, what is this, where am I? It's like, oh, there's lots to do, come on, we don't have time to wait. Everybody, come this way. And he's paying no attention to anything. He's just busy, got things to do. And there's a realization that there's nothing to do. But his motivation is to get stuff done even though there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do here. Now? That's the past. That's what you did when you were alive. There's a tunnel. We've got to go up here? Okay, off we go. There's no circumspection in this. I was astonished. There's no moment when he goes, what is this place? Where am I? How come there's nobody around? There's none of that. It's so weird. He goes off along the tunnel and starts floating now. We float? Oh, okay, that's how we get around. Fine, okay, let's float. Off we go. No question, just we float. What's at the end of here? Anybody know? There's nobody there to ask.
He doesn't need to be this energised. He wore me out. Goes up the tunnel. Now very often the tunnel is fairly short and at the end of it there's a light and a little membrane they go through and that's it. But not in his case. He marched on just trying to get stuff done, trying to get somewhere, trying to fulfil his duties that didn't exist. And when he gets to the end of that length of tunnel, there's another one. Oh, well, we'll go down here then. He does this like four or five times. He goes up, down, around, and I'm just following him through, thinking, when is this going to end? And after a while, he starts to think that too, because this is draining. This is wearing him out a little. Because he's not actually achieving anything. He's not getting anywhere. He's just going along tunnel after tunnel after tunnel. And it's wearing him down. Which I think is the entire point of it. After several of these tunnels. He comes to a dead end. The tunnel is walled off. He is starting to realise that things aren't right. That there's something weird about this thing he's doing. And now he can't go any further. He starts to feel confused. Whereas other people seem to realise quite early on that something is not right. <laughs> he has taken this entire time to figure out that this is not the real world. Very strange. He gets to this wall and he is extremely frustrated and tired. And he slumps down and goes, I don't know what to do. And as he's weakening... As his ego's control over the situation is lessening, the wall he's leaning against shifts aside, making a gap. He goes, oh, great. And off he goes, jumps, <laughs> tries to get through the gap. But as he's trying to get through, so he can continue, so he can carry on working, carry on walking, carry on moving. The door, which is what it is actually, starts to shut again. And it closes. He shrinks even further. His resistance shrinks even further. And as his resistance shrinks, the door opens again. Aha! The light goes on. So the less I resist, the more chance I have of getting through the gap, because the gap will widen. So he starts to work on yielding. He starts to work on just relaxing and not trying to force these issues. And as he does so, the door goes and slides aside. This time he tries to stay in this state. No resistance. Yielding. And that is when he sees the light, finally. This whole process, as far as I could tell, was about getting him down off this high pedestal he was on of expectation, of labor, of involvement, of ego-fused achievement, of rapid movement. Getting him down from that high place to a low common place where he could finally transition. Everything was about that. On the other side of this door, he sees the dome, the membrane thing. Normally I see these hands of grace, but sometimes maybe grace isn't necessary. Sometimes we're left to figure it out ourselves. And grace is waiting for us on the other side of the, the divide. So he just puts his foot in. Both arms. And slides inside. And goes into it. And vanishes. Practical. Um, matter of fact. Unexcited to the very end. And somehow the universe recognised that. It's like uh, cosmic unseen forces said, we don't need to help this guy. He will get here. We don't need to send out a search party to find him. And he got there. And he realised for himself 
that he was no longer the caretaker of his life, that somebody else was, or something else was in charge. And once he acknowledged that and was prepared to let go of what he'd been hanging on to, his old self, his mortal self, his ego self, once he was prepared to yield and let that go, the door opened and he could go the rest of the way. And he went, and that was it. Very unsatisfactory in some ways, and yet incredibly telling. It all seems to be about letting go, being willing to release all the things that we attach importance to in this life so that we can transition in an easier way. But whether we do let go or we don't, we still get to the same place. Unconditional love, the universe welcomes us and all's well. But we could make it so much easier for ourselves. Put that burden down. Move towards wholeness and happiness will follow. It's time. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, subscribe, like, share. Uh, or follow me on Twitter if you want, at Cash Peters. But uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.